In this video, we'll be discussing about a diphtheria toxin. It's a type of exotoxin that is secreted by Cornibacterium diphtheriae. We know it's a pathogenic bacteria that causes diphtheria that usually involves mucous membranes of nose and throat initially. Now, first of all, let's see the toxigenicity of Cornibacterium diphtheriae, where we are going to see how toxin is getting produced in the bacteria. Here we see we have the coronophage or beta-phage. It infects the coronibacterium diphtheriae and then the phage integrates its DNA with bacterial chromosome. And one important thing to be noted here is that the phage DNA contains the tox gene. So we can say tox gene of phage integrates with the coronibacterium diphtheriae and we get the tox gene lysogenized. And from here, this tox gene in the bacterium expresses itself in the form of toxin, what we call as AB toxin or diphtheria toxin. Now moving towards the structure of diphtheria toxin. The diphtheria toxin is a type of AB toxin that has two components or subunits in its structure, subunit A and subunit B. We see the subunit A is the active component of AB toxin. It acts as an enzyme, blocks protein synthesis when it acts as an ADP ribosyl transferase enzyme and inhibits the eukaryotic elongation factor 2. Now getting to the subunit B. It is a binding site for toxin. This B subunit helps in binding the toxin towards the cell receptor and then bound receptor gets internalized. So this B subunit mediates the entry of toxin into the cell through endosome formation. And within the cytoplasm, the subunit A is released. Furthermore, let's see the molecular structure of diphtheria toxin. Here in this diagram, we have the intact toxin. It is a single polypeptide molecule with two different fragments as shown in the different colors. This intact toxin is non-toxic because the active site of this toxin that shows enzymatic activity is masked. Then within the host cell, we get the proteolytic cleavage of intact toxin and reduction of disulfide bonds, which yields two polypeptide fragments. The first fragment which is shown in the red color is the subunit A that shows ribosylating enzymatic activity that blocks the protein synthesis. And it must be noted here that this subunit A only gets activated once it's cleaved off from the polypeptide structure. And on the other hand, we have subunit B, which is made from two fragments. One fragment is for receptor binding and other one is for translocation. Furthermore, let's see the segmentic structure of diphtheria toxin. Here we see we have the three structural domains depicted as R, C and T domain. The R domain is the receptor domain. The T domain is the translocation domain. And C domain is the catalytic domain of diphtheria toxin. And here in this structure, we can see the R and T domain makes up the subunit B of toxin. And uh, C domain is the subunit A of toxin. And we know this R domain is for receptor binding as it mediates the receptor mediated endocytosis of toxin. Then we have the T domain that initiates the pH induced conformational change which triggers the insertion of domain into the endosome structure. That means it helps in translocation. And finally, we have the C domain. It blocks the protein synthesis by transfer of ADP ribose from NAD towards the diphthamide residue of elongation factor 2. So this is what the diphtheria toxin is and its structure. In the next video, we'll be discussing its mechanism of action. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.